Do you remember when the United States was a model for helping people come together and overcome their differences? Well, clearly, something has changed. Every day, it seems like the United States is drifting into a deeper state of chaos. Mass shootings making people afraid to go out to the grocery stores, outlandish conspiracy theories, and friends and family turning against each other for far left and far right politics. And not to mention the insane rising cost of living. With oil superpowers like Saudi Arabia turning away from the United States dollar, has United States as a world superpower seen its best days and is currently in decline? After all, the United States has a pretty short history compared to the rest of the world. Will the United States eventually fall like the Roman Empire? Or can the US come together as a nation to fight for freedom that has become nothing more than a tacky bumper sticker on a lifted truck? It is no surprise that many Americans like me who are stuck in the middle of a liberal and conservative sandwich are ready to get the f out. But why are so many Americans choosing Portugal? A lot of Americans have been recently choosing Portugal because of its slower and calmer pace of life. Maybe it's an opportunity to enjoy their life amidst the chaos of an ending pandemic and the transition into a looming threat of another world war. Portugal may not be perfect, but for an American lost in translation, it could be one last chance for a new beginning. Now, I've been living in Portugal for almost a year now, and I don't really have any desire to move back to the United States at this moment. Never saying that I will, but right now it is not in the cards. This is the most in-depth video I've ever done and maybe the only one you'll need to know if Portugal is right for you. Stick around until the end because I'm gonna show you the best regions to live and places you might want to avoid. For those of you that don't know, Portugal is located in the southwesternmost part of Europe on the Iberian Peninsula next to Spain. No, it's not an island off of Brazil or in South America. Portugal is in South America. It's known for its incredible beaches, great seafood, rolling wine vineyards, and great quality of life. But is Portugal safe? Portugal has been ranked one of the top five most safe countries in the entire world. This reason alone is why many Americans are choosing Portugal over places like Costa Rica and Mexico. This can partly be contributed to Portugal becoming the first European Union country to decriminalize all drug use in the year 2000. New HIV infections, drug deaths, and the drug-related crimes all fell sharply within its first decade. Imagine if the United States decriminalized drugs and what that would do for the safety of Mexico. But how is the healthcare? Portugal also has very good public and private healthcare, ranking 22nd out of 89 countries, and performing particularly well in terms of the quality of infrastructure. I recently went to the doctor and had an EKG and a full blood panel done, and the cost was only 15 euros. That's about $16 in the current exchange rate. The doctor's office was super organized, very clean, and super professional. Much better than a lot of the doctor's offices that I've visited in the United States. There is an option for public and private healthcare. If you don't like the public hospitals, you can pay for premium private insurance to have your own room in a much nicer hospital in a private setting. I currently have premium private healthcare and it costs around 80 euros a month. So what about taxes? This is a big one. Portugal offers one of the most generous tax exemptions of any country within the EU. It is called the NHR, which stands for the Non-Habitual Tax Regime. This is a tax regime that allows new Portuguese residents to be taxed at a max rate of 20%, as opposed to the 48% normal income tax in Portugal. Yikes, 48% is a lot. And cryptocurrency is currently not taxed at all in Portugal. So you can see why many foreigners are interested in moving to Portugal. 
How difficult is becoming a resident or citizen? Portugal is one of the easiest places to become a permanent resident and the citizenship is one of the easiest pathways for Americans in all of Europe and maybe even the world. It's no surprise that Portugal has been featured on lists for the best places to retire for the past several years. But as of recent, it isn't just retirees moving to Portugal. Thanks to articles from CNN and the Los Angeles Times, a lot of new millennials are starting to move to Portugal. That's because Lisbon is establishing itself as a new tech hub. Portugal has given grants and different incentives for foreign investment companies to move into Portugal and start their business up. But what if you're not into tech or living in a busy city? Well, the great thing about Portugal is it has everything to offer. Two major metropolitan cities, Lisbon and Porto, which has all the museums and culture and restaurants that you could ever need in an urban setting. But if you're looking for a more quiet life, this is where Portugal truly shines in my opinion. I always had the dream of living off the grid somewhere in rural America. Somewhere where I could have a garden or a farm and live completely off of the land. But like most Americans, I couldn't afford to buy anything that was worth it. Portugal is a lot different in size relative to the United States. No matter where you're at in Portugal, a city with decent infrastructure is usually no more than an hour drive away. Portugal's entire west coast is along the Atlantic Ocean. This coastal region has some of the most beautiful beaches in all of Europe, and the cost of living is about 60% less than living in the United States. Can you imagine owning a house with a pool on a little bit of property 20 minutes from a beautiful beach for the same cost that it would cost you in the United States to own a mobile home in the middle of nowhere? This is totally possible in Portugal, and it's exactly what I did. I moved to the Silver Coast of Portugal, which is about 45 minutes from Lisbon. I moved to this area because it is much more affordable than the Lisbon metropolitan area, but it's very easy to get in and out of Lisbon on a day trip. Not to mention this area is known for its world-class surfing. Every year, the World Surf League hosts the best surfers in the world to come to Ereceda and Peniche to surf some of the best pipeline waves in all of Europe. But this is not the place that you would come if you're looking for a club or party scene. The pace of life here is a lot slower and more for people looking to enjoy some calmness. But is there Amazon delivery in Portugal? I know this is a question a lot of Americans will be asking. Rest assured, there is Amazon service, even Amazon Prime. It's through Amazon Spain, but a lot of the stuff that I order shows up the exact next day, just like it does in the United States. The selection is not as big as the United States Amazon. However, it works great for me and the selection is still awesome. But is Portugal for everyone? Portugal is a very old country and there are a lot of abandoned and dilapidated buildings with graffiti all over them. This can be a turnoff for people looking for a very pristine and modern city. Many people, including myself, are not used to the very old buildings and by Portuguese law, these cannot actually be changed from the outside. But as time has gone on, I have really gotten used to it and I love the character and charm these buildings have. The grit is really amazing and cool and I wouldn't have it any other way now. Portugal's bureaucratic process has a lot of red tape and may move slower than a lot of processes in the United States. This is very important if you are a person that likes things to be done instantaneously as Portugal just doesn't work that way. Remember, you are in a new culture and you can't expect everything to be done on your time here. But the secret has definitely gotten out about Lisbon. Speculative costs of foreign investors have raised the prices to a lot of major cities in the United States. Right now, there are two bedroom apartments in Lisbon listed at 3,370 euros, which is just a ridiculous price. And the apartment isn't even really anything that special. In fact, a lot of the apartments in Lisbon have problems with poor insulation, resulting in cold apartments and lots of sound leaking from the street and your neighbors. I have stayed at many very nice Airbnbs in Lisbon and sometimes it sounds like the neighbors are in my apartment. 
which drives me absolutely crazy. So I make sure when I go to Lisbon that I bring earplugs. There are also bidding wars happening in Lisbon, which is causing an insane amount of speculation. When I first came to Portugal, I wanted to live in Lisbon, but it was so hard to sign a lease that I just said, no way. I had a landlord that wanted me to pay $12,000 upfront for the entire year of the lease of the apartment. That's just crazy, and I might as well look at putting a down payment on a house or getting a loan at that price. And yes, there are ways for foreigners to get loans in Portugal from a bank. Here are some of the best places to live in Portugal. The Lisbon area. Which has the most infrastructure and culture and is the most international city. Living in Lisbon would be the best for a person looking for the hustle and bustle of a metropolitan city. Lisbon has incredible restaurants, a vibrant nightlife, and very rich cultural history. Most people don't know this, but Lisbon is actually older than Rome. Depending on your budget, this will most likely be apartment living. This is the most expensive option living in Portugal, but probably less than half the price of living in a city like San Francisco or New York City. There are many awesome cities right outside of Lisbon, like Sintra and Cascais, where the rich and famous like Madonna and Cristiano Ronaldo live. The next city would be Porto. This area in the north is quite a bit more affordable than living in Lisbon, but the prices have been rising. Porto is a bit smaller than Lisbon, but has the authentic Portuguese character. The people in the north are said to be nicer than the people in the central coast. However, this area on average does get a lot more rain than Lisbon and is a bit more cold. The cities around Porto are also worth taking a look at. You have Braga in the north, which is a small town with Disneyland-esque gardens in the city center and you have Aveiro below, which is considered the Venice of Portugal. The next area is one of the most popular, which is the Algarve. The southern region of Portugal is home to many of the most beautiful beaches. In fact, so many British have moved here that a lot of Portuguese joke that the Algarve isn't even Portugal anymore. There are some really cool, amazing small towns all across the Algarve. And if you're looking for a laid back lifestyle close to the beach and mini golf courses, then Algarve might be for you. Then you have the islands off Portugal, Azores and Madeira. Madeira has been considered the Hawaii of Portugal because of its warmer climate and volcanoes. It gets much more sun on average than mainland and it's quite a bit warmer. If you're looking for a tropical climate, then I would definitely consider Madeira. There are some absolutely wonderful and beautiful hikes here, and for a nature enthusiast, choosing an island like Madeira or Azores could be a great option. You will be a little more remote here than on the mainland though. I have a video showing prices and a deeper dive into these regions on this channel. Definitely check them out. Places you might want to avoid. Now, there aren't really a lot of places in Portugal to avoid as most of the country is uniquely awesome and has different things to offer. But I would avoid any areas that are too far away from bigger cities. Some of these areas may lack infrastructure like good internet and simple amenities. This is very rare for Portugal as most places are modernizing but they're still out there. Are foreign investors in Portugal speculating so much that it is gentrifying and ruining the pricing for the locals? Now, in a sense, there is definitely a lot of truth to this, but this is happening in almost every major city in the world. The government in Portugal knows that they need to invite innovative companies from around the world into Portugal to create jobs for the younger generation so they have access to new levels of income that are currently unavailable to them. But of course, this will always cause gentrification as young professionals move in and native citizens are priced out. Leave a comment below on if you think Portugal should continue to court foreign companies to bring new jobs to Portugal or if they should eradicate foreign investment and jobs completely. I hope this video has helped you to understand why so many Americans are choosing Portugal as their new home. If you made it this far in the video, you should probably come see for yourself. 
If you wanna see more videos about Portugal, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be posting videos just like this every single week on this YouTube channel. My name's Dave in Portugal, and we'll see you next time.